So guys, on the chat, my question to you is to start off with, what is perimeter? So if anyone can give me a definition or if anyone can explain, what is perimeter? A lot of things going on here. Let's go, my people. <laughs> Put on the question, write it down. Let's go. And I'm actually asking you, grade eight. So in the chat, what is it? Okay, so Inamandla's put the total distance around the shape. Nice. Anyone want to add to that? Anyone got something different? Shali, the distance around the shape. Patience, perimeter is total distance of a shape. Okay, well, I'll take what I've got here. Right, I agree with all of your definitions, which is awesome. So perimeter is the total length or distance around the outside of a shape. And I'm adding here 2D shape because when we look at um, 3D images or 3D shapes, 3D images or um, 3D shapes don't have a perimeter. We can talk about surface area. Yo, guys. Sorry, I'm not sleeping. Um, we can talk about total area. We can talk about volume. But perimeter is very much a, a concept or a measurement that we use with 2D shapes. So the way I like to imagine a perimeter, and it can be any shape, I'm just gonna use a very basic rectangle to start off with. Perimeter can be based on any shape, and we're gonna do a few examples today. But I always like to imagine that if this is my shape, the perimeter is essentially if I were to put a fence around the outside of my shape. That is what perimeter is. I always think of it as, if I had to fence off the shape, what would the length of fencing be? And so that is perimeter. Okay, now in order to determine perimeter, we obviously need to know what shape it is we're working with. Depending on the shape, there might be some calculations we need to do before we can get to perimeter. And this is where things like um, Pythagoras potentially are useful to us. But really we need to get comfortable with the shapes that we can work with and how to work out perimeter. Alrighty, so let's have a look at our first example. Sort of leading on from what I've already done, we here have got a rectangle. Now guys, I'm not assuming that it's a rectangle. I know it is because all of these um, corner angles or interior angles are 90 degrees, which means I do have a rectangle. Okay, so if I have a rectangle, my first question to you guys is, if this side on the right was X and this side down at the bottom was Y, what are my values of x and y? So in the chat, what is x equal to and what is y equal to? Based on the fact that I know I'm working with a rectangle, what are x and y? Nice, guys. Well done. Okay, so exactly like you guys are saying, the X side was five centimeters, the Y side 15. Now remember, this is because in a rectangle, opposite sides are equal to each other, okay? So that's why I was saying earlier, we need to know what type of shape it is we're working with because once we know the shape, if we are missing any lengths or dimensions or anything like that, we can use the shapes uh, characteristics in order to figure out what it is I'm missing. Okay, so we've been asked to determine the perimeter of the shapes that are going to follow. Now again, this is my rectangle, so this is what I want to fence off. I need to work out the length that I'm outlining in blue here. And so what that means is that my perimeter of my rectangle 
would be equal to me adding two lengths plus two breadths. All right, now we could simplify this a little bit if we want. Two lengths plus two breadths, breadths. Some textbooks write this formula as two times length plus breadth. If you distribute the two in, you end up with two length times two breadth. So it's exactly the same thing, just in a slightly different version. But essentially, this that I've written down here for you guys is your formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. So if you are someone who likes to learn formulas and who finds um, knowing formulas very useful, this here in my little blue bubble is how we work out the perimeter of a rectangle. And let me put this here. Okay, so the perimeter of a rectangle we can find using that formula. But essentially, all we're actually doing is we're adding the four sides up. Okay, so I'm going to add my two lengths, so two times 15, plus my two breadths, which is two times five. Two times 15 is 30 centimeters, two times five is 10 centimeters. And so I get that my total perimeter around the shape is 40 centimeters. Now, a couple of things. Firstly, perimeter, we use a capital P to represent that we're working our perimeter. So it's absolutely fine for you to say P equals. Second thing is perimeter is a, param, per, perimeter is a measurement, right? It's a length, it's a distance, as you guys said, which means that there has to be units attached to my answer. So if, as we have in this diagram, there are units given to you, you have to put those units in with your answer. All in all, though, we've worked out the perimeter of our rectangle, and we've got that if I were to follow that blue line, I have got a 40 centimeter length or distance. All right, so let's take our screenshots. If anyone has any questions, now's the time to raise your hand. Um, little quickly, I've written the formula down in a little bit of a bubble. Um, if you're struggling to see the screen, you need to unpin and repin my screen, or maybe even log out and log back in again. But try those two things. If you still can't see, we will see what we can do. Right, guys, I'm assuming we've all got our screenshots. I'm assuming there's no questions. I'm going to move on to the next one. Little quickly, like I say, if you're still struggling, let me or Yolanda know and we'll help you out. Right, what I will do is I'll leave the first example up there for you, just in case you didn't manage to screenshot. And let's have a look at question B. Okay, so question B, again, we're looking for the perimeter of the shape. This time, however, I'm working with a triangle. So technically the perimeter would be from point R to P, P to Q, and then Q back to R. That is the perimeter of my shape. Now, again, what we need to have a look at is, do I know all of my lengths? And if I don't, how would I get it? The first thing that I notice, guys, is that I don't know what RQ's length is. Now we can see that this is a right angle triangle. So who can tell me what is the theorem that we use to work out a length in a right angled triangle? So if I don't know a length in a right angled triangle, exactly Sinyane, I use Pythagoras. Okay, so we have just done a whole course on Pythagoras. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to use Pythagoras to work out the length of RQ. Okay, we've done a whole course on it. Go back in your notes, have a look. Um, let us get our length for RQ. If you're feeling super comfortable, you can go on and do the perimeter. But all I'm asking you to do right now is to um, work out the length of RQ.
Okay, I'm not too stressed about it now, but just remember that when you do do Pythagoras and you're working out, you will need to have the reason Pythag. Like I said, I'm not too stressed about the answers coming through now. I'm sure you've put your reason Pythag. If you haven't, just make sure you do. Um, so just remember, anytime you use Pythag, we need to give it as a reason. Right, guys, so I'm hoping that we've all done our Pythag. Like I said, we have done it, so it should be fresh. However, we can see that RQ is our hypotenuse. So hypotenuse squared, so RQ squared is equal to the sum of my square of my two other sides, so six squared plus eight squared. If you put eight squared first and then plus six squared, remember that's absolutely fine. Just remember your reason, Pythag. We then get RQ squared is equal to 36 plus 64. And so RQ squared is equal to 100. Now, guys, remember, we don't want RQ squared. We want RQ, which means that in order to solve this equation, I need to use my inverse operation of square rooting. And we know that the square root of 100 is 10. So RQ is 10 centimeters. And now I can quite easily go work out my perimeter. Okay, now remember the perimeter is the blue length all the way around my triangle. So I'll have 10 centimeters plus six centimeters plus eight centimeters, giving me a total perimeter of 24 centimeters. Okay, now there is a little formula for the perimeter of a triangle. I don't particularly think it's all that intriguing but I will write it down for you anyways. So the perimeter of any triangle, and I'm just gonna draw a little triangle here, is adding up the three sides. Now, often in textbooks, they use A, B, and C to represent the sides. So it would quite literally be A plus B plus C. And so I'm saying, I don't think it's anything too special. You literally just add up the sides. Sometimes you have to use Pythagoras to work out one of those sides like we've just done here but essentially that is your formula. So some textbooks or your textbook might give you that specific formula, just that so you understand what it means, but that is how we work out the perimeter of a triangle. But again, grade eights, add up the sides that make up your shape and you have the perimeter. All right, please remember again, perimeter has units. In this case, our triangle is measured in centimeters, so our answer should be in centimeters. Right, so let's take our screenshots. If anyone has any questions, now's the time, excuse me, to ask. You can raise your hands if you do have questions, otherwise we're screenshotting. And then I'm gonna move on to the next question. Hopefully this one we can try. I can't actually remember what it is. <laughs> okay, so Bokang's asked how many marks, how, mm. How many marks will we get for this type of question where we have to calculate Pythagoras and perimeter? Okay, so this type of question, I'm going to say between four to five marks. If there's like unit conversions, it can add to a little bit more, but we'd probably give you a reason for the Pythag setup with the reason, the 10 centimeters. If we're feeling generous, we could give you a mark for adding the sides and then 24 or we could just give you a final answer mark. So I would say between three to five marks, depending on the complexity. Um, but yeah, four is a, is a decent sort of mark allocation for this type of question. Vishali, no, we can't. Remember that is the formula for the area of a triangle. Right now we're doing perimeter. We're not touching on area just yet. We will look at that formula, but that is for area. Alrighty, cool. Oops, sorry. All right, guys, so I want you to try question C for me. Just a little reminder that these little strike marks on the sides mean that those sides are equal. 
Okay, so what we're doing here is we're working out the perimeter of this quadrilateral. We'll discuss what type of quadrilateral it is in a second. All I want from you right now is to work out the perimeter. Just quickly want to turn on my lights. Remember your units and your answer. Good, grade eight, well done. Okay, so as I say, the tick marks mean that the sides are equal. So these two sides are both 12 centimeters because they both have two strikes, strike marks on them. Similarly, these two sides are both the same length. They're both five centimeters because they both have one strike mark on them. Okay, so it's really important to remember that equal length. Well, the, the line means equal length. So perimeter, again, we just add up all our sides, is equal to 5 plus 5 plus 12 plus 12. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 12 is 22, plus 12 is 34 centimeters. Alrighty, so like grade eights, literally don't overthink perimeter. Don't think you have to use fancy formulas. Don't think you have to overcomplicate things you look at your shape you add up the sides and that's that okay so don't overthink it Alrighty, so let's take our screenshots if anyone has any uh questions now's the time to raise your hand guys we're going to have a look at a slightly different perimeter question the one that we still need to be able to deal with and still need to be able to uh to answer Pilo. Ma'am, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, when we use perimeter, ma'am, does it mean we just have to add up? And then area doesn't mean we have to like multiply the numbers together. Nice, well done. Exactly. So area okay. generally involves multiplication and like you say, perimeter, just adding up. Well done. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, and guys, obviously we are going to chat about area. So, um, like, don't stress about that. We are going to chat about it. Um, but that's a good sort of summary of operations. Tony? Hi, ma'am. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, in this uh, topic that we're going to do, are we going to, like, minus or are we just going to plus? Um, in, like, specifically in parameter? Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Um, so most of the time we're just passing. We might need to minus if it's a slightly more complex shape to get a side that we need. But like the the um, final calculation of perimeter, we, we just add up sides. So when we do slightly more complex perimeter questions, there may be a need to, to subtract. So for example, if I gave you this sort of shape and I say this was 10 and this was seven and you didn't know what that is, then you would have to say 10 minus seven in order to get three. But the actual perimeter, we will add, 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 add. I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, okay, ma'am. Okay, so Thank slightly you. more complex ones there may be. 
Okay, thank you, ma'am. Sure. All right, guys, I'm glad we're starting to think about all of these things. It's really good. All right, so let's have a look at question D here. Don't get too excited for the brain break. We will have one, but don't get too excited just yet. Um, question D says, and it's really important to read our question carefully, the perimeter of the square below is 32 centimeters. So I'm telling you firstly that this is a square, which means that all of these sides are equal to Y because they're all the same. And the second bit of information that I'm telling you is that if you add up all of these side lengths, you will get 32 centimeters. The question asks, determine the value of y, the length of the sides of the square. Alrighty, so let us try it by ourselves. Let's see what we get. So give it a try, like think carefully about what's going on. I like that some of you have given a bit of an explanation for what you're trying to do here. Good, great eights. All right, so there's two things I want to say. Firstly, if this is, if this question was given to you as like a problem solving type of question, we wouldn't be too strict on how you worked it out, but you would need to try and give some sort of explanation of um, what you're doing. So Amandla, I'm about to explain it. So just give me two seconds. If it still doesn't make sense, you can let me know, but I am gonna explain it now. So like I said, if this is a slightly like, if this was given to you rather as a problem solving type of question, you would, really be able to sort of use any method but you always need to try and explain what you're doing so what i mean by that is you would say something along the lines of a square has four equal sides hence i would divide 32 by four however and this is the second thing i want to say sometimes what we will say is using an algebraic equation or by setting up an algebraic equation solve for or determine the value of y and if we say that, we expect you to set up an equation. So I'm going to show you that way, and you will see it's exactly the same as dividing this value by four. So we know that the perimeter of a quad would be equal to y plus y plus y plus y. We would add up the four sides. But in this case, we've actually been told that it's 32 centimeters. Now, grade eight's y plus y plus y plus y. Those are all like terms. So I end up with 4y is equal to 32. And then remember, our goal here is to solve this equation. So inverse operations tells me that I should divide both sides by 4. So um, in a mandala, this is why we're dividing by 4 to solve for y. And so what we end up with is that y is equal to eight centimeters. Now guys, I know it's centimeters because the perimeters and centimeters. And so each of these sides are eight, eight, 16. I count eight, 16, 24, 32. Four eights give us 32. All right, so that's essentially why we divide by y. The other reason is the fact that <coughs> A square has four equal sides. So we are adding the same number four times to get 32, which means to figure out what that number should be, I could divide 32 by four. 
All right, so guys, this question D definitely a slightly more complex or slightly um, higher order, if that's what you want to call it, type question. What's really important here is that you read the question carefully. It's actually a very easy question if we read it properly. Um, no, no, so like I say, like I would, and the reason I'm saying I would is because I've seen the way different teachers mark and often we give you a reason for, a reason, a mark for your reasoning or an explanation of what you're doing. In this case, this would suffice as an explanation, but if you don't know how to set up an equation, you just know you should divide it by four because it's a square, I would just write that down. We don't need a whole long paragraph, just like a simple sentence, this is why I've done what I've done, and then you do your calculations. But I would, especially if you don't know how to set up the equation, it just makes sure that your marker can give you some marks for um, correct reasoning. Alrighty, guys, so let's take our screenshots. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's take our screenshots. And um, then, like I say, definitely time for a brain break. And again, if you've got questions, please let me know. Okay, nice, great, it's all done. Righty, so let's have a look at our brain break. I hope you appreciate uh, the joke. I know we haven't done area yet, but I think most of you probably have done it at school. Try to make it fit in with today's topic. Um, here's our brain break, guys. You know the drill. What we want is the value of this last equation down here. So you know how it works. First person to get the answer right. Um, I will call on you to give me an answer and to do it myself. Oh, hey guys, <laughs> that's why I made myself to laugh, so you can laugh also. <laughs> what did the area say to bury me while arguing? <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you, but I feel like you're just going around my problems. God, I love this one. <laughs> Let me take a screenshot and put it on my WhatsApp status. <laughs> oh. I'm glad we enjoyed it. <laughs> Hopefully we will never then forget what perimeter is. Exactly. Yeah, every single time, just think of the joke. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so guys, we're waiting for some answers. Let you know when I see the right one. Remember, do it slowly, look carefully at whether or not you've got two, two fruits, two of each fruit, one of each fruit.
Let's go, my people. We can get this. Let's go. I hope my maths is right. You guys, I never can doubt myself. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's because I'm doubting everything. So I don't actually know if my answer is right, Yolanda. You can just ignore me from what I've said for now. <laughs> I don't look at the fruits. And I just told Maybe you Maybe I might need to also calculate on my side. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I was like, Look at the fruits. Make sure you're looking at your fruits properly. What do I do? Yes, my pips. Look, Look at the that. fruit properly. <laughs> okay, so you guys definitely got it right before me. Clearly, clearly, my eyes need a bit of testing, despite the fact I'm wearing my glasses. So the correct answer and the first person who got the correct answer was Bootle. Well done, Bootle. Thank you for making me doubt myself. Well done. Well so done, Bootle. You want to <laughs> raise your hand? And to explain it for us? Going once, Butle, let's go. Going twice, let's go, Butle, where are you? Find the reaction button and then raise your hand. Click on it to raise your hand. You can do it. Okay. Anyone else who got it right, you can raise your hand. We know that Butle got it right, but maybe Butle is shy. I was just about oh, to say, Sinyane so was the next person. Nice. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Okay, so first I said 24 divided by 3, which is 8. Nice. And then the lemon is 8, 8 times 4, because there's one strawberry, Good. plus 4 is 40. Mm -hmm. Then there's two lemon, there's four mm -hmm. lemons, so 16 plus 16 times 14 is 240. Then I said eight times 14 is 112. 112 plus eight is 120. Oh, sorry, I got so confused there. Excellent, and I'm glad we did bod mass. Well done, hence why I was confused. Very nice, uh, Sinyane. So guys, really importantly, and the, the, the oopsie I made was I forgot that there were two lemons here. So I was using them still as eight, and I forgot that there were two lemons. So, Make sure that you do actually look at your question carefully. <clears throat> um, but very, very nicely done. There were quite a few of you who got 120. So well done. Um, and well done on making me doubt myself. That's always a good thing. Okay, guys. So let us have a look at <clears throat> the questions over here. So the first, well, the first thing just to bear in mind is that unless I'm saying otherwise, all we're doing in these questions is we are determining the perimeter, okay? In the first example, I have told you that the perimeter, <laughs> okay, my highlighting skills apparently are just as good as my addition skills today. Perimeter of the parallelogram is 50 centimeters. So I already know that if I go all the way around my parallelogram, it's 50 centimeters. I am asking you to determine the length of X. Now quickly in the chat for me, grade eights, what do we know about the opposite sides of a parallelogram? What do we know is true of them? Nice, great eights. Good, okay, good, they're equal. So what that means is that if this side length is 10 centimeters, this other side length is also 10 centimeters. And if, I don't know why I'm making that choice, but anywho, and if this side length is X, then the side length at the bottom is also X. Okay, so I want you to use all of that information 
And I want you to tell me what is the length of X. Give it a try. I've told you what the perimeter is. We've established that the opposite sides are equal to each other. So I want you to try and tell me what the length or what the value of X is. Remember, we've got centimeters here, so our answer should be in centimeters. Those answers coming, guys. Well done. And again, there's a couple of different ways that you could set up your working out. Um, I'm going to show you the algebraic way just because it is always good to be able to set up an equation for yourself. But um, your working out could potentially look slightly different. Okay, nice, guys. All right, so what we know, come on, is that we've got x plus x plus 10 plus 10, all of that making up a perimeter of 50 centimeters. So x plus x is 2x, 10 plus 10 is 20. And so we know that that's equal to 50. Now it's just an equation that we solve. 2x is equal to 50 minus 20, which means that 2x is equal to 30. And some of you put that on the chat and then said, cool, I would now just say 30 divided by two, which is exactly what we would do. We want X alone. So we're gonna divide both sides by two. And so we get that X is equal to 15 centimeters. Okay, so once again, question like the one we did just before the brain break, really important that we can read our question carefully, see what information we've been given, use um, the properties of our shape and potentially go backwards from a perimeter to work out a missing link. Alrighty, any questions, grade eights? Any concerns? Let's take our screenshots, if not. And like I say, grade eights, it is quite useful to try and set up equations for yourselves. We don't always ask it, but as you move up in maths, we do expect you to set up an equation like what I've done here. So it is just beneficial for you to get into the habit of, of setting up an equation. Okay, nice guys. All right, so I'm just gonna get rid of that block. We'll just um flannel so again like yes but it doesn't have to be a like a, a paragraph say opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal therefore you know 50 minus 20 equals 30 divided by 2 get your answer so as long as you're telling me that you know that a parallelogram has two pairs of opposite sides equal that's good enough um, as like I say, as you get on in math, we do expect a little bit more of you, but then we sort of start to, um, I don't want to say train you, but we start to show you how to set up your answers better. But at this point, if you can just say opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal and then do your working out, that's, that's absolutely fine. Alrighty guys. So, uh, where are we at? Right. Um, if we have a look at our next shape, we have a circle. Okay, now circles, you start to work with a lot more, especially in geometry, as you um, move on up in maths. But in terms of perimeter and even area, we use very specific formulas for the circle. Right, so before I get into that, say uh, okay, if you don't put the centimeters, so if you don't put the units, will you lose marks? At a grade eight level, I would take off a mark. Um, I would only take off the mark once. So let's say, for example, throughout your whole test, you forgot every single answers unit. I would only take it off once. Uh, we generally don't penalize you more than once for the same mistake. 
Um, again, as you move up in maths, we're not as strict. But if you do maths lit, we are strict. So that's why I'm always just quite strict with my grade eights and grade nines because you never know if you're going to go into maths or maths lit. So rather get it right from the start. So I would just make sure my answers have the units. You might lose a mark if you forget it. All right, you guys. So your circle. Now, this is one where you unfortunately do have a formula that you need to know. And that formula is as follows. Now, remember, perimeter is the outside length of your shape. And so the perimeter is the circular boundary for the circle. Now, we actually have a special word that we use for the perimeter of a circle. We call it the circumference. Okay. Now, the circumference of your circle has two formulas. They're basically the same. It just depends whether or not you have a radius or a diameter. So I'm going to give you the formulas, and then we'll chat about what they mean once I've done that. So the first formula is either to say 2 times pi times r. You could also just write this as 2 pi r. The second formula for circumference, I'm just going to say circumference, is pi times diameter. Again, you could just write that pi d. Now, again, these are the formulas that we need to know to work out the perimeter or what we call the circumference of a circle. And obviously, we need to know what these um, terms or what these variables mean. So very, very quickly, if we have a circle, hopefully it's actually draw the circle for me. Uh -huh. There are many parts to a circle, many line segments of a circle. However, if we've got our center and we draw a line from the center to the circumference, this line is called the radius. Okay, so the radius is drawn from the center of your circle to the circumference. The diameter, on the other hand, goes from one end of your circle through the center to the other end. So it's basically two radii put together. And this is your diameter. And as I've just said, really importantly, your diameter is two radii. So if you say two times your radii, you get the diameter. Okay, pi represents the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. You've put me on the spot here. I am panicking a wee bit. I have a whole nice animation that I usually use in class with this, and now it's gone out of my head. Don't, don't be sorry, it's okay. Yes. Um, pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. So if we measured the circumference of a circle and we divided it by its diameter, you will always get something that gets very close to pi. So it's a ratio of lengths in a circle. Right. Um, don't know where I was going with that. Sorry, my brain short circuited there. Okay, so guys, if we've got the circle and we want to work out its circumference, you either need the radius or you need the diameter. It doesn't matter which one, you need one of them. In this case, hopefully what we see is that we have got the line drawn from the center to the circumference. So this line here is my radius. So because I've got the radius, I'm going to use this formula. If you wanted to say radius times two and then use pi times diameter, that's fine, whatever you want. So my circumference here is equal to two times pi times my radius, which is four. Now, on your calculator, so I have to grab my calculator. Firstly, we need to know where pi is. So pi is on top of this times 10 to the power x button, and it's in yellow. So that means you have to say shift. So we will say two times shift pi, probably if I could say shift pi, and we will get our pi symbol on our calculator times four, okay? Now guys, what you need to be careful of is your calculator will give you an answer in pi, okay? So the answer that your calculator gives you says eight pi. 
Now that's technically not wrong. You put centimeters on the end and that's your um, circumference. But that doesn't really mean anything to me. Like, I don't know what eight pi centimeters is. What, what? So we'll push our SD button and we can convert it to a decimal. Now, remember we try and round off to two decimal places. So this two will have no effect on the three. So this is 25,31 centimeters. And generally, when you're working with a circle, we will tell you to round off to two decimal places. Okay, there was a question of, do you do the same thing on a Casio calculator? This is actually a Casio calculator. I know it's a silver one, but yeah, it is. Guys, if you have one of those like slightly smaller calculators where you don't have the pi button, what you can do, these pen, is you can use pi as 3,142. So if you don't have a pi button on your calculator, remember that value for yourself and then you can type that in. Sorry, Sinyane, sometimes I um, mix up my numbers. It is what it is, one, three. Thank you. Amangye, I just mixed up my numbers. I have a tendency to do that. It's, I apologize, I fixed it. Um, and so yeah, just remember pi 3,142, if you don't have a pi button on your calculator, 